the ongoing divide between the Dallas Cowboys and franchise defensive end Demarcus Lawrence is starting rise to the top of the 2019 offseason discussion. While Dallas has made a some solid free agent moves in the last week and the draft is still to come, it would seem all for naught if they don't have their top pass rusher next season. That reality gives Lawrence plenty of leverage in these contract negotiations. Unfortunately for the Cowboys, their bargaining position is far from solid. Between the overall the market, Dallas' own roster, and their lack of high draft picks, they are almost dependent on DeMarcus' return to maintain a championship-caliber defense next year. The consensus top four defensive ends in free agency this year were Lawrence, Jadeveon Clowney, Texans, Trey Flowers, Patriots, and Frank Clark, Seahawks. Three of them, Lawrence, Clowney, and Clark, were franchised by their previous teams. Flowers signed a five-year, $90 million deal to join the Detroit Lions. The Flowers deal, averaging $18 million per year, didn't even set the floor for conversations with these other players. They're looking at the $23.5 million that Chicago's Khalil Mack averages as a much closer measure for the money they deserve. According to reports today, the Cowboys and Lawrence are squabbling over about $10 to $12 million over the life of the contract. Source tells that the athletic DFW DeMarcus Lawrence seeks $22.5 million in average salary. Cowboys at $20 million on average. Here's our report from NFL Owners Meetings, https colon slash slash t.co slash Now this doesn't take into account the guaranteed money, which is often the biggest issue with NFL contracts. Average salary is nice but can come back to bite the player if a team releases him in years 4 to 6 as a salary cap casualty. It's the divide between base salary and the original signing bonus that generally makes those moves happen. But whatever the conflicts are in these talks between DeMarcus and Dallas, it doesn't seem like the Cowboys are going to win. Lawrence swore last year he wouldn't play 2019 on a second franchise tag. If he fulfills that vow, as we saw Le'Veon Bell do last year in Pittsburgh, then it leaves the Cowboys with a pretty ugly situation at defensive end. Tyrone Crawford, a solid veteran but needs better player around him to really make an impact. He is currently under investigation for a bar brawl incident a few weeks ago and could miss a few games under the NFL's personal conduct policy. Randy Gregory, started to emerge last year but has been suspended once again for drug use. His status for 2019 is completely up in the air. Taco Charlton, fell out of favor with coaches last year for work ethic and effort issues. Still young but has yet to make any impact relative to being a first-round pick. Kerry Hyder, a free agent signing who flashed talent in 2016 with eight sacks but missed all of 2017 with injury and played out of positions last year. Durant Armstrong, an intriguing second-year prospect but still completely unproven. That's a motley crew, and even worse if Gregory stays suspended. It would likely lead to a disastrous reminder of years when Dallas tried to cobble together a pass rush out of guys like Jeremy Mincy or Benson Mayoa. We've seen this defense without a consistent pass rush and it's not pretty. Many would argue that it cost Dallas a chance at a title in 2014 or 2016, when they rode a fence into the playoffs but twice got ousted by Aaron Rodgers. The Cowboys project to have a strong offense once again. It would be a shame for the defense, which finally broke out last year, to take a big backward step by losing an impact player like Demarcus Lawrence. Dallas Cowboys did Demarcus Lawrence said it'd be one thing if the Cowboys could let someone else pay Lawrence max money and replace him with a somewhat comparable player. Sometimes those deals are out there, but not in 2019. The franchising of Lawrence, Clowney, and Clark has worked to the advantage of the players as it has frozen the market price at max huge deal from last year. Even if none of these players are necessarily on max level, or have produced as consistently as he has, they can argue that Khalil's deal plus one year of general inflation sets a good price for them. Plus, as they're all franchised, none of them are available to help give their teams another option.
Nobody is going give up the first round picks to sign a franchise tag player when they could just re-sign their own. The Cowboys are especially hindered by not having a 2019 draft pick until late in the second round. A late first round pick would hardly be expected to replace Lawrence right away, but it would at least help their overall position. Instead, Tank and his agent see a team that needs a catalytic edge player and has no reasonable way of acquiring one. This isn't the increasingly undervalued world of NFL running backs, where a team felt like they could afford to go without an elite talent like Le'Veon Bell. Dallas might be hoping to call Demarcus Bluff and at least have him play at the $20.5 million that his franchise tender pays. After all, that's a year of earning Lawrence can't get back. But if Tank sticks to his guns then it's the Cowboys who could lose, and lose big, by squandering their last season with Dak Prescott on his rookie contract. 2019 may be their best opportunity to go win a title before a huge portion of their salary cap gets tied up at QB. All of these factors show how it's Demarcus Lawrence, and not the Dallas Cowboys, who have the power in these negotiations. Even if you think Lawrence is asking for more than he's worth, it all comes down to what the team is willing to pay. If winning next year means anything to the Cowboys, they may have to accept defeat this offseason. 2019 Offseason Defensive and Demarcus Lawrence Matthew Emmons USA Today The 2019 NFL Draft is officially less than a month away and drawing closer by the day, but don't expect the Dallas Cowboys to be sitting on their hands in the meantime. They've done an outstanding job of adding quality free agents to minimize their draft needs, so far, but there is one position they could still stand to upgrade, backup running back. My fellow staff writer, Jess Haney, recently wrote an excellent article entitled, Will Dallas Cowboys Address Backup RB in Free Agency or 2019 Draft? It's an excellent read, and a question a lot of us around Cowboys Nation have been asking ourselves. Everybody's interested in finding out who will become the RB2 behind Ezekiel Elliott in 2019, and so the waiting game begins. Since we have nothing to do but wait, I thought I'd go ahead and throw my two cents in. If it was me, I'd go ahead and add a cost-effective free agent running back to pair with Zeke and then add another one through the draft if one happened to be there I liked in the mid to later rounds. This would free up the Cowboys draft, needs even more in my opinion. This of course is where Ty Montgomery comes into play. His name isn't one mentioned all that often amongst the current free agent running backs, but I believe he would make an excellent addition to the Dallas Cowboys roster and wouldn't break the bank to bring aboard either. Free agent RB Ty Montgomery, Jeff Hanish USA Today Sports, you may not be aware of it, but Ty Montgomery is a native Texan and grew up in the Dallas area. He attended St. Mark's School in Dallas where he was a five-sport athlete in football, track, baseball, basketball, and lacrosse. From there he took his talents to Stanford, where he played wide receiver under head coach David Shaw. You're probably more familiar with his story from there. He was drafted in the third round of the 2015 NFL Draft by the Green Bay Packers. He started his career playing wide receiver for them, but out of necessity was moved to running back. It was at RB he found his niche in the NFL and turned into one of the more versatile runners and pass catchers in the league. I'm really intrigued with the things Ty Montgomery would bring to the table as the Dallas Cowboys RB2. He's someone who I believe could help lighten the load on Zeke's shoulders as both a runner and receiver in the passing game. His background as a receiver would also give the Cowboys an emergency WR if worst comes to worst. What I also like about Montgomery is his ability to contribute on special teams. I think he could immediately be an upgrade as their kick returner. He's averaged 22.7 yards per kick return in his career. Having special teams ability is something valued in backup players and luckily he's no slouch in this area. Ty Montgomery is only 26 years old and won't turn 27 until January 22nd. 
His ability to contribute as a runner, receiver, and a returner is really intriguing and the Cowboys may not be able to find that kind of trifecta in an RB in the draft. That's why I would go ahead and lock him up pre-draft, and then add a rookie if there's one available in the draft I truly like. What do you think about the Cowboys adding Ty Montgomery pre-draft? The signing of free agent safety George Aloka over the weekend has put a big question mark over the position for the Cowboys. He was back up last year in Minnesota and is on just a one-year contract, so does Dallas expect him to start? And if so, what does that mean for Jeff Heath and Xavier Woods? Had Dallas signed someone like Earl Thomas or Eric Berry, or even several of the less lofty names that were on the open market, then a starting role wouldn't even be up for debate. We'd only be asking which player between Heath and Woods would be moving to the bench. But Aloka doesn't bring that same pedigree. He only started three games last year for the Vikings due to injuries, serving a primary reserve all of 2018. This was after he'd been a five-year starter with the Cincinnati Bengals from 2013 to 2017. It's important to fully understand Aloka's situation. He was released by the Bengals in the middle of the 2018 preseason after they'd spent a second-round pick on Jesse Bates. They saved over $5 million in salary cap space on the deal, having just signed George to a five-year, $30 million extension in 2016. Mid-August is a bad time to become a free agent, and especially at 28 years old. Most starting jobs are already decided and even primary backup roles are generally filled out. Teams are mostly assessing their developmental players by this point. It says something that Mike Zimmer, Vikings head coach, decided to add a loca just a few days after he was released by Cincinnati. Remember, Zimmer was the defensive coordinator for the Bengals from 2008 to 2013. That means, he helped draft Aloka in 2012 and had him as a full-time starter the following year. Safety George Aloka Most teams would have waited until after week one to add a veteran like Aloka, so that his contract would not be fully guaranteed. But Minnesota, with Zimmer likely the driving force behind the move, scooped George up almost immediately. This wasn't because the Vikings were hurting at safety, either. They had multi-time pro bowler Harrison Smith and veteran Andrews and Deha locked in as starters, plus Anthony Harris as a solid backup. The point here is that this isn't the time to blindly exclaim, he didn't even start with his last team. These weren't typical circumstances. That said, there is a some question as to what George Aloka's role will be with the Dallas Cowboys. Jeff Heath has been full-time starter the last two seasons and is still in his physical prime. Xavier Woods worked his way into the starting lineup in 2017 and held it for all of last year. With Kevin Frazier also under contract as a backup with three years of experience, one could ask why Dallas would sign Aloka if they didn't intend him to start. At the least, George should be competing with Heath and Woods for a top spot on the depth chart. But I don't expect him to be handed anything. Dallas will likely open training camp with Heath and Woods as the starters, as they tend to do whenever the previous year's starters return. Aloka will get opportunities but will have to take the job away from one of them. Dallas Cowboys S. Jeff Heath Mark J. Rebelos USA Today Sports, I think the guy who should be most worried is Heath. The Cowboys can save $2.5 million of his cap hit if he's released, which is money that could go towards mid-season contract extensions with Dak Prescott or Amari Cooper. Those savings could also simply be rolled over into the 2020 cap if they aren't used. With Jeff set to be a free agent in 2020 anyway, Dallas would have less reason for loyalty over Xavier Woods and the two years left on his deal. Also, Aloka is more likely to fit in at strong safety. That's been Heath's role the last two years. Dallas won't necessarily cut Heath if he loses his starting job, given Jeff's veteran experience and his standout ability on special teams. His $2.95 million cap hit isn't too high for a primary veteran, and especially one who can play both positions. Still, this isn't certain. 
Xavier Woods is still young in raw in some ways, and prone to draw penalties with his big hits. If he doesn't polish his game more in 2019, Dallas could wind up liking their two veterans more. It's even possible that it will be Aloka who winds up on the bench. Nobody on the current roster really stands out as a fourth safety, so perhaps the Cowboys see George as just a solid depth option as he was for the Vikings. In fact, this morning's news on Aloka's contract with Dallas might suggest a lesser role. The Cowboys signed George Aloka to a one-year, minimum salary benefit contract that will count $735,000 against the cap. He will make a $930,000 base salary and $90,000 in bonus money. Of the base salary, $210,000 is guaranteed. https colon slash slash t dot co slash smooch clearly a lot is still up in the air after this signing while george aloka is intriguing and has more experience than probably all of dallas other safeties combined he's being given bare bones deal that could mean he's going to be nothing more than a backup or rotation player nothing is guaranteed what's more we still have the 2019 nfl draft to consider One thing this Loka deal tells us is that Dallas is hardly out of the business of acquiring safety talent, and could still go as high as their 58th overall pick. If that happens, we could again be looking at the disparity in Heath and Aloka's contracts. Aloka would make way more sense as the experienced, versatile, and far cheaper reserve at that point. For that matter, there's no guarantee that George will be on the Cowboys' 2019 roster. They may simply be taking a flyer on one of the last decent free agent safeties available, creating some competition for training camp without any sense of major commitment. So no, this signing didn't answer much. If anything, it may have created even more questions. We may have to wait until final cuts to know how George Aloka truly impacts things at safety, if he does at all. The Dallas Cowboys' backup running back spot may not seem like a high priority compared to other 2019 off-season issues. But all it takes is one bad play for Ezekiel Elliott to be lost, and the Dallas offense leans too heavily on the RB position to take his backup plan lately. Will the team be looking to improve the talent behind Zeke through free agency or the draft? Right now, the only running backs signed to the Cowboys roster are Elliott, Darius Jackson, and Jordan Chun. The backup for the last few seasons, Rod Smith, is currently an unrestricted free agent. Jackson and Chun have a combined six carries for 16 yards in their careers, and all of those came from Darius in the Cowboys' meaningless 2018 regular season finale. Chun spent all of his rookie season on the practice squad. A sixth-round pick for Dallas in 2016, Darius Jackson is on his third stint with the Cowboys after stops in Cleveland and Green Bay in between. He has flashed some electric running ability at times but clearly hasn't been able to stick with a team. Could 2019 be his chance? Jordan Shun was an undrafted free agent out of Troy last year. He's a big, powerful runner with some deceptive athletic moves as well. What stands out most with both of these guys isn't positive, though, and that's their mutual inexperience in draft capital. Would the Cowboys really leave their RB depth charts a thin when they're trying to make a championship run? Dallas Cowboys RB Rod Smith Dallas could be hoping to eventually re-seen Rod Smith at a bargain price. He's a solid backup and special teams leader, and the longer he sits unsigned in free agency then the lower his price should be. But is it time for the Cowboys to invest more in their other running backs? Not only is 2019 a critical year, but upcoming contract negotiations with Elliott could make it a wise move. This upcoming season is the last one of Zeke's standard rookie contract. Dallas will have to decide if they want to sign him long-term or let him play 2020 on his fifth-year option as a former first-round draft pick, which would pay him about $9 million. Signing or drafting a player of consequence now, and having them under contract over the next few seasons, would give the Cowboys some added leverage in contract negotiations with Elliott. 
What's more, who's to say that Zeke's impressive durability will just continue? He's already had a lot of touches in three years, even with the six suspension games. Maybe it's time to find someone who you don't mind giving some of the workload to. Some of the top free agents available likely won't want the reduced role, and money, that playing behind Elliott will mean. That would take guys like Jay Ajayi and CJ Anderson off the list. What about older veteran who can still ball, like Marshawn Lynch, Darren Sproles, or Doug Martin? You might not want them as a featured player anymore but they could still be effective on limited touches. Joining a potential contender like the Cowboys in a supporting role could be exactly what these guys are looking for. Other free agent options would be players who are used to back up roles, such as Isaiah Crowell, TJ Yeldon, or Spencer Ware. They would be probable upgrades from Rod Smith but for minimal money if they stay unsigned much longer. Oklahoma Street RB Justice Hill The draft is another way to add some RB talent, and it could be the smartest one. A drafted player, even as high as Dallas second round pick, would have a four-year rookie deal at a minimal salary. One player that could make a lot of sense for the Cowboys is Justice Hill out of Oklahoma State. He brings a change of pace from Elliott as a smaller, quicker back and could be available for them during day two of the draft. Hill was featured as a potential Cowboys target by our Brian Martin a few weeks ago. You might say that having Elliott makes any sort of serious draft pick at running back a wasted pick. But with Zeke turning 26 after the 2020 season, the Cowboys might be willing to let someone else give him a huge deal and move on to a much cheaper option. And again, who says that Elliott makes it through another 16-game season in playoffs without a major injury? It can happen to the best of them. Clearly, this could go any number of ways. Dallas might bring back Rod Smith or some comparable player for a cheap, easy answer at backup running back. Maybe they invest in a more proven free agent, or perhaps they draft someone early enough to matter. However it goes, let's just say that I highly doubt Darius Jackson will be RB2 come September.